Hi guys. Wow, it's really bright. That's okay though. Okay, so my name's Erin, if you don't know who I, I am. And yeah, I serve here in the youth ministry and I serve in the kids ministry. I did coffee bar before, but I'm just not very good at it, so I don't do that anymore. Um, but the spiritual discipline that I get to talk to you guys about tonight is the spiritual discipline of serving. And I want to know what is like the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the word serve? What else do you think of when I say the word serve or serving? What, do you, what does that mean to you? What, what was that? Helping people? Yes. Volleyball. Volleyball. That is a type of serving, but we're not talking about that one. <laughs> um, yeah, and what um, Calvin said, a waiter at a restaurant, that's actually the first thing that came to my mind um, when I thought of serving. It was like the people that bring you your food, they're the best. God bless them. Oh, I love them. I love when I see them coming and I'm like, I know that's my food. I get so excited. Um, but sadly, you guys, that isn't the serving we're talking about tonight. They get paid to do that, but but we don't get paid to do this serving. So if that's what you thought this was, um, it's not. So stay seated. But we're going to talk about a different kind of serving today. So then as I kept thinking about it and I thought about what does the word serve mean, the next word that came to my mind was the word love. Um, and in John 3, 16, the other day I was thinking about this, and I was like, what's that verse where he says, for God so loved the world? I was like, it's in Genesis, I think. And I said that to one of my friends, and she's like, that's not in Genesis, that's in John. And then I just felt, ugh, yes. John 3, 16 says this, okay? It's not in Genesis. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. And then in Matthew 20, 28, it says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so as I read through these two verses, what came to my mind was, so Jesus was sent to us out of love. God sent him to die for us out of, the way, out of, out of how much he loved us. And then Jesus came and he served and he died because of how much he loved us. So it was all out of love. The reason that God sent Jesus for us was because he loved us. And then Jesus served and died because he loved us. So when I think about that, I'm like, okay, so serving and loving, they're kind of one and the same. You can't really have one without the other. You, if you're serving and it's not out of a heart of love, it's going to be not for the right reasons. Either maybe you're serving because you want to get noticed or you want to have someone look at you a certain way. But if you're serving and there's not love in your time with it, it's out of maybe selfish reasons or not out of the right um, heart. But when you're showing people that you love them, the byproduct of that is that you're going to serve them. It's just a natural thing that we do when we love someone, we want to serve them and we want to help them. When we love our parents, we want to maybe do the dishes for them because we love them. Or if we love a friend, we want to help them through a math assignment or something. I know that would be love because I hate math. In Mark 12, 30 through 31, it's the, um, Jesus says this is the greatest commandment. It says, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind and all of your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. And I remember hearing this verse for the first time in high school. I remember where I was sitting and everything. And my youth pastor said this verse to love your neighbor as yourself. And honestly, I thought, but what if I don't? Like, what if I don't really love myself? And I really want to talk to you guys about serving tonight. And we are going to talk about that because I think it's so important. And I love doing it. But I think first we need to understand what it means to love ourselves. Because if we can't properly love ourselves, how are we going to love our neighbors? I thought, if I don't love myself, how can I love the people around me correctly? If I don't even know what it feels to like really be loved. How can you give something to someone if you don't have it yourself? And so, in 1 Corinthians 13, 4-8, through 8, it says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. And I know we talk about this a lot when it comes to loving other people. We should, you know, love people by being patient and kind and, like, not being rude or boastful to them or whatever it is. But have you ever thought about this maybe with yourself? Are you kind to yourself? Are you patient with yourself? Do you keep no record of all the things that you do wrong? Or do you lay in your bed at night and think of all the things you could have done differently that day? 
or all the things you should have said or shouldn't have said. And when I read through this, I can't say that I do all those things all the time. And you guys, I just want you to know today that the words that you speak over yourself or the words that you think about yourself are going to be what define you. I know personally for me, I shared this with my life group girls a few weeks ago, um, but I used to look at myself in the mirror and I used to see all the things that didn't line up to what I thought was beautiful. And I would see all these things that I thought were really ugly about myself. And I remember I would look in the mirror and see those things and think those things. And then some days I didn't even need to look in the mirror. I would just know, I would just think about it. I would just think about all the things about myself that I didn't like. And that kind of started to define me. I just thought that I just wasn't beautiful. And maybe it's with, maybe it's with your intelligence. Maybe you sit there and think all the time of how stupid you are. And if you say you're stupid over and over and over again, you're going to start to act stupid. Because why would you try and be smart if you just keep thinking that you're stupid all the time? Or maybe you think that you're not good enough at something or you're not good enough in general. If you keep thinking that and you keep speaking that over yourself, what's going to make you want to try and do more or be more? Did you guys know that the average person, for the average person, about 70% of their thoughts every day are negative thoughts. 70%. And the reason, I believe that the reason that that statistic is so high is because the enemy knows that if he can get you in your head, if he can get you in your thoughts before, maybe before you speak them out, if he can stop you here and tell you that you're dumb and you're not worth it and you're not enough and you're not good enough and you're not pretty enough and you're not strong enough and you're not capable enough, if he can do that here, you're never going to live it out. If you don't think that you're enough because of who God created you to be, you're never going to want to live it out in your real life. So the enemy's going to do that. He's going to get in your head so that you don't act it out. Proverbs 18 to 20 says, words satisfy the soul as food satisfies the stomach. The right words on a person's lips bring satisfaction. And a drink of water is great. And when I think about this, I mean... I know, like, if I go and eat a bunch of candy, like, all day long, like, I have a few friends that can just eat candy all the time, and they're completely fine, but if I go and eat candy or junk food all day, I'm probably going to feel sick at the end of the day, but if I decide to eat a salad every single day, which I don't, because I don't really like salad that much, but if I did, I would be really healthy. I'd probably feel really good, and my body would probably like me a little bit more, and that's the same thing with our words and our thoughts. Like I was saying, you guys, if you are going to speak negative thoughts over yourself and speak negative words over yourself every single day, you're going to start believing that and you're going to start feeling sick. I know for me, if I go and scroll through Instagram and TikTok and Facebook all day long, at the end of the day, I sit there and I don't really feel that great about myself. Is that kind of the same thing with you? Do you sit on Instagram for a few hours or TikTok or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. I don't even know what's popular now, but at the end of that, do you really feel good? And if your answer is no, then I would say maybe think about that. Maybe think about what do you want to be spending your thoughts and your time on every single day. In 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about taking every thought captive and making it obedient to Christ. But we aren't really able to do that if we don't know what God's word says about us. And this goes back to what Dylan was talking about last week. The spiritual discipline of knowing what God's word says and studying his word and understanding what it says. Because if you don't know what it says, you're not going to know even what to speak over yourself. You're not even going to know what's true about yourself if you don't know what he says about you. So I'm going to do something that maybe you guys are going to think is a little weird, but I don't care because I have the microphone. So I'm going to have everybody close their eyes. I'm not going to play a prank on you. But as I was reading through and just reading through what God has to say about me and about all of us, I wanted to take, I took some verses and I kind of got the point that God was trying to get across to us and what he wants to say to you. And I'm going to read them off to you. And I don't want you looking at your phone or talking to your neighbor. I want you to listen to the words that I'm speaking and know that this is exactly what God wants to say to you. He's just not here to say it audibly right now. But this is what he has to say. He says, I see you. And I know you. I make you new every single day. I created you on purpose. And I created you for a purpose. You are wonderful. I will give you strength when you are weak. You are forgiven. You are mine. You are special to me. 
and I love you. You guys can open your eyes. And I can tell you these things until I'm blue in the face. I can wake up every morning and text every single one of you and tell you that you're great and God loves you and you're wonderful. But until you choose to believe it for yourself, it's not going to change anything. I can sit here. I would love to come and shake all of your shoulders and tell you that. And then you probably all think I'm really weird. But I would do that if I could, if that would make a difference. But you guys, truly, at the end of the day, you have to choose that you're sick of waking up and feeling not good enough. You have to choose to wake up and decide, you know what? No, God said that I have a purpose. God said that I am great. He said that I am strong. He said that I am capable. He said that I am his. He said that I am loved. So because of that, I'm going to live my life to serve him. And I'm going to live my life for him. I'm going to live my life in confidence because I know what God says about me. But you need to know what his word says about you to be able to do that. But the more that you do that, the more that you choose to wake up every single day and choose that because, you guys, it's really hard. It's still hard for me some days to wake up and choose that. But I know at the end of the day that I'm going to feel way better if I wake up and choose to believe what God has to say than to go through my day and think things about myself that aren't true, things that the enemy's putting in your head so that you don't do what he's called you to do. And it's really hard. But if we're called to value the things that God values, well, you know what? He values you. So you need to be able to value yourself so that you can do what he's asked you to do. So I'm going to tell you guys something. And you can't judge me, okay? Because this person became famous when I was like 12. But I follow Justin Bieber on Instagram. Anybody else? Okay, like a lot of person. Okay. <laughs> Well, I follow him on Instagram because he's cool, okay? I like his music. But I was scrolling through Instagram the other day, and I came across one of his posts, and in this post, he was talking to God. So I was like, okay, what does this have to say? And his post says, um, in one part, he's speaking to God, and he says, thanks for showing me that I'm enough. And I stopped, and I was like, Justin Bieber needs God to tell him that he's enough? Like, doesn't he have like millions and millions of fans to tell him that he's enough? Doesn't he have a ton of music that's really good to tell him he's enough? Doesn't he have followers and probably a bunch of girls chasing him everywhere like to tell him that he's enough? Like how does Justin Bieber not know that he's enough? He has money, he has everything he could want, he has a beautiful house, he even has a beautiful wife, he has a good life. And yet he knows that only God can tell him that he's enough because those things those other things haven't satisfied him. He's gotten the money, he's gotten the fame, he's gotten the followers and the friends and everything you think you could want. But even Justin Bieber knows that only God can tell him he's enough. And everything else is going to fade away because friends sometimes are going to leave you. Money comes and goes. But what God has to say about you never changes. And so, again, I just want to say this before we go into this next part here, but... What God has to say about you, you have to choose to believe it. You have to wake up and choose that you're not going to keep feeling like you're not enough. You're going to wake, you have to wake up and choose that you are going to decide that you are beautiful because God said you are. He created you in his image. So how could you not be? You have to choose to believe that I'm capable of doing what God has asked me to do because he's God and he doesn't lie. If we're going to believe what God's word says, we have to believe everything that it says. We can't just pick and choose what to believe. And on those days when it's really hard, I want you to find a leader or a friend, maybe even tonight in your life group, think about someone that you're, you can say, you know, when I have a really bad day and I need someone to help me out because it's going to be hard sometimes, this is who I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to this leader. And I know that any leader in this whole room would love to do that for you. And I bet you have friends sitting next to you that would do that for you too. So find someone tonight that even on those really hard days, and maybe every single day in a whole week is going to be hard. And that's fine. Because sometimes it is hard for a whole week. <laughs> but find someone that can do that for you on the days that you're feeling your lowest. Maybe find some Bible verses. Or maybe get off social media because that's something that I think that can really affect how you go through your life. When you're looking at all these things that tell you what you need and what you should have and how you should look. It's just, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's draining sometimes. So step one is love and value yourself. And step two is serve. That's kind of what we're here for today. So when I first went to church for the first time in eighth grade, my brother called me up that morning and he was like, hey, do you want to go to church with me? And I was like, it's Wednesday. And he's like, yeah. 
And I was like, they have church on Wednesdays? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. I thought it was so weird. I did not know that people had church on Wednesdays. So I went, and then it was just a bunch of young people. I thought it was like everybody. So I was super thrown off. I had no idea that they even did this thing called youth group. And I stood there, said hi to people. And then when worship started, and the youth pastor started singing, I just started crying, like like gross cry, like snot everywhere. It was disgusting. But I was like sobbing and I had no idea why. It was my first time ever going to church and I was like disgustingly crying. And this leader took me from where I was and she brought me in the back and she started talking to me. She gave me a Bible and she started telling me all about what God had to say about me. And she told me that great plans, plans that he had for me, she just poured love into me, something that I really had never experienced, someone telling me that I was truly enough and that there is nothing I even had to do to attain any sort of level of greatness or perfection or whatever it was. But I had someone pouring into me and she had a family and she had a job and she had so many other things she could have been doing with her time. But she decided to come into that youth ministry and talk to me and speak over me. And if she hadn't done that, I don't know where, I think I probably would have went home and been like, why the freak did I just cry for an hour and a half and then went home? Like that would, that would have been horrible. I probably would have never went back. But because she spoke into me and helped me understand what was happening in that time, I didn't know it, but it was the Holy Spirit was just coming in and filling my heart up with a love and a hope that I had never experienced before. And I didn't know what to do with, so it came out in snot and tears. Water's good for this. So, I did that. I went to church that night. And then I, like, never stopped going back. I thought it was the greatest thing. I got saved, like, 15, 20 times probably. So, I'm very saved. Um, and then, after that, it kind of became, like, normal. Like, I go to church on Wednesdays. Sometimes I go on Sundays. Like, it was just kind of what I did. It was normal. And I just kind of stopped it being saved, really. I didn't really do anything else. And I don't know about you, but I really want to make a difference at the end of the day. I want to be able to go home and be like, you know what, God? I did something good today. I like complimented that person, or I bought them some coffee. Or at the end of my life, I want to look back and be like, look at the things that God helped me to do. So I did what the only thing I knew to do. I went to this place after high school called Heartland Master's Commission. If you guys don't know what that is, well, I will tell you about it if you want later. Um, but I went there and it was great. And we served like a lot, okay? I cleaned a lot of tables and I moved a lot of chairs and I got lots of muscle because that was, like we served all the time. It wasn't just like moving tables and stuff, but we served in so many different ways. We traveled and served. We served here at the church. And I remember we would go and serve and I would be sitting there working really hard, like probably harder than anybody else. And I would be like, okay, hey, so who's gonna come up and thank me? Like. Is anybody kind of gonna come say thanks, like good job? And then I'd be like, hey God, like I'm serving you. Are you gonna tell me you love me or give me a bouquet of flowers? Or like, what's gonna happen right now? And then I'd go to sleep that night and be like, what the heck? Like I served harder than anybody else there and God didn't do anything. I didn't get flowers. No one came up and thanked me. Like, what's up with this? I hate serving and I hated it. I was like, this is stupid. Every time I would go and work so hard and I thought I did so good and then I would get nothing out of it. And I got so frustrated. I was like, God, hello. But what I learned from that, after being so annoyed with serving for so long, is that I was doing it with completely the wrong heart. So when you get saved, that's kind of like, I don't know I'm talking in steps tonight. Step one is go to church. Step two, you get saved, hopefully. And step three, I think, is the next step is the action step of serving. That is taking what God has done in your heart and when he comes into your heart and he shows you these things and he shows you who you are and you decide that you're going to choose to love yourself even when it's hard, the actions of that and what you get to do from that is you get to go and you get to serve. Like I said earlier, it's like the byproduct of knowing that love and that worth and that value you have is going out and serving and giving that to other people and showing Jesus to other people. And when I finally realized that and that it wasn't about being thanked by people because sometimes you just don't get thanked. That's not because you're not great. It's just that it just doesn't happen sometimes. That's not really how it works when it comes to serving. You don't get paid. <laughs> I realize that it's not the serving that's ma that makes me significant, but it's who I became in the midst of the serving. It's who you become when you choose to put other people before yourself 
and you choose to let God flow through your life into someone else's life. It's not all the things that you do. It's not all the tables that I moved. Because those tables had to get moved again some other time probably and cleaned again and it was forgotten. But it's who the Lord was making me in the midst of that serving and what he was teaching me in the midst of that. The key to finding your significance is not in doing but being. And through serving, I've grown in so much confidence because I know who God created me to be. And I can't really explain this very well. It's like something you just got to do it, like Nike. You just have to do it and understand. But when I started serving, God was teaching me things about myself that I, I had no idea that he was even trying to teach me. But because I was like, you know what, God? I don't know exactly like how to do this or I don't really even like this that much right now. I feel uncomfortable. But because I went and I chose to serve, God showed me parts of who I am. He showed me that I have value. And he showed me that I have talents that other people don't have. And he showed me that there are things that I can do that other people can't do. And that's in the action step. When you choose to go out and actually serve and do things to bring glory to God and to show Jesus to other people, God is going to keep working in you. Because you can get on that really, you know, that spiritual high of being saved or going to camp and NYC. And those things are also great. And they were amazing. And I'm so glad I, get, I got to have those experiences. But when you have those experiences and God fills you up, you need to go and pour it out to other people. And serving is the way to be able to do that. Proverbs 11.25 says, The generous will prosper, and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So we have to choose to believe this too. So when I started serving and doing it for God and not because I want to praise for it, I had to decide to believe that God was going to refresh me or that I was going to be refreshed when I refresh other people because it's not always going to happen in the way that you think it is. It's not going to be people thanking you all the time. It's not going to be anything great like that. Sometimes it's just knowing that God is going to refresh you. And like I said earlier, it's hard to explain, but it happens. I go and I serve and I feel refreshed out here. I feel energized and excited and I feel as though I've made a difference because I just continue to choose to do what the Lord is asking me to do and serve in the areas that he has given me talent in. In Romans 12, 9-13 says, we're going to be closing off here soon, hopefully, but it says, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Now that's a lot, and that's all kind of hard. Like, I mean, I don't know if anybody's an expert at all of these things. But what I do know is that I can pick one thing on this little list here. It's up there. And I can say, okay, you know what? I'm going to try to not pretend to love people. I'm going to try and just genuinely love them because I know who God created them to be. Because I know who God created me to be. Or maybe I'm going to try and not be lazy all the time. Maybe I'll never be lazy, but I'm going to try to not be lazy all the time. Or maybe you're going to try and be eager to practice hospitality, which means just like inviting people in and making them feel welcome and loving them. Serving isn't really always easy. But the more that you do it, just like any of these spiritual disciplines we've been talking about, the more that you do it, the easier it gets. And the more fulfilling it is. So, one last story for you guys. When I was in my first year at Heartland Master's Commission, the kids pastor, Mark, came up to me. And I think he was talking to a group of us. And he was talking about like serving in kids' church. And I was like, I will never serve in kids' church. I hate kids. They're annoying. They cry when I hold them. Like, I did not like kids at all. I told him, I said, I will never, ever, ever be in kids' church. And then, um, the end of my third year, I don't really know why, but I started serving in kids' church. So, that's kind of funny. So, never say never to God, because he'll probably make you do it. Um, so, I started serving in the kids' church, and at first it was really awkward, and I felt pretty uncomfortable, and I didn't really, <laughs> didn't really want to do it, and I was scared to talk to the kids, because I didn't want them to cry. And, but I'm telling you, I love kids ministry. I think it is one of the greatest things. I love being in there with them and talking to them. I get to dance, so that's fun. I mean, they call it worship, but it's kind of dancing. Um, and I have so much fun. And you know what? God has taught me so much through being able to serve in kids ministry. But if I didn't just choose, you know what, God? This makes me feel uncomfortable, but I'm going to do it anyways. If I didn't just choose that, 
I would not know so many things that God has taught me through it. The patience that he's given me. Oh, man, the patience. He's given me so much patience um, for kids. <laughs> but he's taught me so many things through just being able to go and serve in that ministry. He's, ta- he's taught me things through Pastor Mark, and he's taught me things through the other leaders. But the thing is with serving is you have to choose to do it because it's not always going to be comfortable, and it's not always going to maybe even be something that you really want to do. But the great thing is with serving you can always try something. If you don't like it, it's not like you're stuck there forever. It's not like you write a contract and you're stuck. But try serving in different areas. See what it is that you're good at. See what it is. The talents that God gave you, he's going to give you them to serve. Just like some of the youth students in here who get to help on the worship team or the kids worship team. You know that those are talents that God has given you. And now you get to go and use those to serve other people. And maybe it's coffee and you love making and drinking coffee. Help with the coffee bar. Maybe you don't like coffee. Maybe try helping at the coffee bar and see what happens. Don't sell yourself short or don't sell yourself out of something just because maybe you feel uncomfortable. You don't feel like that's for you. Just as Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that's where I'm going to end it. But what I want to do before we go into our life group tonight is I want to pray for two different groups. The first group I want to pray for is those of you that maybe don't really like yourself. Or maybe sometimes you feel like you hate yourself because I know that... I know that at one point I didn't really like myself. And I know there's a lot of people in here who probably feel that way. So the first group I want to pray for is you. And I want to pray that you can choose to wake up tomorrow and choose to love the person that God created you to be. And the next day, wake up and choose it again. And then the next day, wake up and choose it again. It's definitely a choice, you guys. And it's going to get easier as you do it, just like anything. But you have to choose to do it. You have to choose to be sick of being where you're at and choose to push on to something even greater. So that's the first group I want to pray for. And then the second group I want to pray for, and you might be in both these groups, and that's totally fine. But the second group I want to pray for is a group that maybe wants more vision in how to serve and what they can do in areas that they would maybe be good at serving in. So I want everyone to close their eyes again, but this isn't weird. Close your eyes and bow your heads. And if you're in this room and you say, Aaron, I, I don't really love myself, and I have a really hard time waking up and liking the person that I see in the mirror, and sometimes I think I'm stupid, and sometimes I don't think I'm good enough. If that's who I want you to raise your hand, it's just me and you. Yeah. So I'm going to pray for you guys right now. Dear God, I just pray for the people in this room that don't feel like they're enough, or they wake up and they don't like what they see, or they don't like who they are, or they don't like what they think, or whatever it is, God. I pray, God, that right now in this very moment that your Holy Spirit would come upon them, God, and that you would start to show them who you are. God, you would show them that they are worthy, that they are capable, that they are good enough, that they are beautiful, that they are good just the way they are. They're good the way that you created them to be, God, because you created them on purpose, you created them for a purpose, You have something great for them. God, if they were the only person in this room tonight, God, that this whole message would be for them. I pray, God, that you would begin to give that to them. I pray that you would give them a person in their head right now that could speak life over them on the days that they don't want to. I pray, God, that you will give them verses, God, that you will just give them the ability to choose to love themselves every single morning because you chose them and you love them and you see the value in them, God. So I thank you for them and I pray, God, that you would just Pour out your spirit on them tonight, Jesus. And if you're in that other group that says that you want to have vision for how to serve and you want to understand maybe more of the heart of serving and you want to get excited about it, if that's who I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you guys. God, I just pray for the people in this room who want that vision, want to know what it is that you have them have for them to do in serving other people. God, I pray that you would give them and excitement to serve God and that you would give them that you would just refresh them when they do serve and they give to others and they refresh others I pray God that you would refresh them back and that they would be filled again God I pray that you would give them vision on maybe even a place that's uncomfortable God and they would go and they would choose in confidence to to do that God to to serve in that way God and see what you can do through that God because you can work through anything that we choose so I just pray God that you would do that for them God that you would give them vision and excitement and what it is they're going to be serving in. God, we thank you for tonight. God, we thank you, God, that you were so good as to send your son out of the love that you have for each and every one of us individually. We pray all these things in your amazing name. Amen.